Now I'm here, gun in hand, tongue in cheek, talking to the empty bottle of Prazazin in my room. My story is not one that you would very much appreciate, however I'm in no state to be concerned for others. Where to begin? Born from my mother's womb, an unwanted child, to a father who would grow to be nothing but a worthless man. And where I would grow, to be just like him. By the age of five, I learned what death was. My great-grandmother died from terminal illness. I was paralyzed from the sight of death. Freedom from suffering, what she would call that awakening day that would someday happen. By the age of ten, I knew sorrow. I knew sadness. I knew how pleasing the thought of death could be. I suffer from epiphenia, insomnia, and agediophobia. The randomness of my mind, days with no sleep, and the fear of going insane. A perfect pairing, wouldn't you think? How I got into the situation I am now in goes a little closer back. Would you care to listen? Almost a year ago, I was in an accident. I was locked up for a while. While I was here, I met a girl. Catherine. We met through an acquaintance of an acquaintance of an acquaintance of someone contained here. A real nut job. Catherine was beautiful, lighthearted, caring, sweet, and the only person who would believe in my passion. My passion was to write stories, the ideal life I've always dreamed of. I had very few admirers of my work. <laughs> None, actually. Dull, gloomy, depressing. The only feedback from my work, ridicule. Despite it, I still loved writing with a passion. That was one of the things about Catherine. She admired my work. She admired the thought of not being afraid to want an ideal life, to work hard for something unrealistic. I admired that I only wore white because of the asylum's teachings. As the days went on, Catherine and I grew closer. My words changed fonts on certain days and numbers inside my head stopped ringing. Four one two three six six one nine three six four five six eight seven six five six seven eight the twenty digit number that has repeated in my head for years a number I can never forget because it balances my system or so I'd like to believe the closer I grew to Catherine the easier it became to sleep Although I would have nightmares of her begging me to stop, I felt so realistic. Me and Catherine moved in together. I can't remember when. I always made dinner, cooked and cleaned, worked. Catherine didn't like to do much. She liked the closet for some reason. I didn't really care for it. It was all worth to have Catherine. I started losing my passion for writing. Catherine became my passion. I wrote for her, lived for her, worked for her because she never judged me. One day the numbers stopped ringing in my head. It was surreal, I didn't know what to do. It felt like I was drifting, forgetting something very important. The numbers inside had locked away something. I couldn't grasp the number anymore. Something was hiding from me. I've lost my mind. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Suddenly the numbers ring in my head. Four one two three six. Six one nine three six. Four five six eight seven. Six five six seven eight. And as I say that, I regain my balance. The ringing had returned, and I had regained my sense of normality. I went to the closet to check on Catherine. As I looked down to slide the door, I wondered when did I start to wear red. A sinking feeling. This was a white shirt. 
this red stain was blood. I opened the door and there laid Catherine, dead, brutally murdered. I killed Catherine. Those nightmares were more than dreams. I knew very well my insomnia would never let me sleep. I was hoping at this point that I would wake up and something would change. I swore I would wait for it to change. I picked up my gun, tucked my tongue to my cheek, and swallowed a bottle of Prezizin. I would kill myself before I would allow myself to become insane. With Catherine gone in these short moments, I felt it was time for one last story. Stories are made to have morals. The moral of this one, insanity. Now I'm here, gun in hand, tongue in cheek, talking to the empty bottle of Prazosin in my room.